Good afternoon, Brandeis. Excited to see you all. I'd like to invite you to close your eyes and think of a place that you love. It could be your home, your backyard, a neighborhood, or maybe it's somewhere you haven't been in quite a while. But think of a physical location. What smells do you associate with this place? What sounds? Is it hot or cold? Or maybe it changes from season to season. Why is this place special to you? And who would you be without this place? Please open your eyes. Today I'd like to share with you a story about how I came to discover a sense of belonging to this place. It's the Rocky Mountains, especially the region on the border of the United States and Canada, an area known as the crown of the continent, which gets its name because water here can flow into one of three oceans, the Arctic, the Atlantic, or the Pacific. And it's an area that's celebrated for its rich biodiversity and intact ecological processes. And I grew up an hour and a half away from this place in a small town, well, a small city called Lethbridge, Alberta, which has a population of about 80,000 people. And it's on the traditional territory of the Blackfoot peoples. Growing up in Lethbridge, I felt like an outsider. It's a pretty rural agricultural place. And when I graduated from, or from high school, I desperately wanted to get as far away as possible from here. It was in the prairies and I thought, why not go to the East Coast? Why not check out Halifax, Nova Scotia? Oh. So I ended up enrolling at Dalhousie University and started my studies in international development and environmental sustainability and really started to enjoy my time on the East Coast. Uh, but the holidays rolled around and I ended up going back to Alberta to visit my family and friends and we went snowshoeing and downhill skiing. And I realized that I had taken for granted the place that I was from. In fact, I surprised myself in feeling that I didn't want to return to the East Coast. I wanted to stay at home. So I started plotting my return. And the next year, I transferred to the University of Lethbridge to finish my undergraduate studies. And in the summers, I started working in Waterton Lakes National Park. And Waterton is a mountain park in Canada, but it shares a border with Glacier National Park in Montana. And one of my first jobs in the park was working at the visitor entrance gate, collecting entrance fees and welcoming visitors into the park. And I, would, I was able to ride my bike to and from the gate. It was one of the activities I enjoyed doing. I used this trail here in the photograph. But there was also a lot of other activities I enjoyed, like fly fishing and hiking with friends. And it was through all of this movement through the landscape that I started to develop a sense of belonging to this place. When I graduated from the University of Lethbridge, I had the opportunity to work in Waterton as an interpretive guide, and I developed and delivered interpretive programs for park visitors. And one of my assignments was to learn more about the history of place names in Waterton. Places like Vimy Peak, which I soon found out were named after significant events and people from World War I. And this got me to thinking, what are places and people from Europe doing on, as names of mountain peaks and waterways in the Rockies of North America? Well, I learned that the people who made the maps of Waterton were men of European descent who were in the area in the early 1900s, carrying their heavy equipment up peaks and, and making measurements. But it made me start to wonder, what was Waterton before it was a park? And what is silenced in Waterton's history? So if we think back to the place that you love, I want to ask you a question. What stories go untold here? As I continued to reflect on these questions, I thought about the courses I took at the University of Lethbridge that taught me about First Nations or Indigenous history in Canada. And I reflected on 
the troubling past of the exclusion and dispossession of indigenous peoples from their lands in this region. Right surrounding Waterton Lakes National Park, in between Lethbridge, my hometown, and the park boundaries, are two First Nations communities, the Bikani Nation and the Blood Tribe. Both are members of the Blackfoot Confederacy, and they share the same language, Blackfoot, and a similar set of traditions. But as I looked around Waterton, I saw very few Blackfoot place names. And as I looked around at my coworkers, I saw very few people who were not Euro-Canadian like me. There were very few First Nations working in the park. All of this inspired me, it motivated me in fact, to go back to school because I was really frustrated and wanted to know more about how I could make a difference. I ended up here in Boston at Brandeis University and I am doing a master's in sociocultural anthropology. And it's here that I am designing, I designed and delivered, um, designed and implemented a research project that brought me back to the Rockies. And in the Rockies, I talked to people about their perspectives on land use management issues and protected areas in the region. And it's through my research that I'm interested in interrupting injustices and dominant narratives about places. So this is me this summer back in the Rockies doing some field work. There is power in allowing a place to nourish your sense of self. And it got me to thinking, if more people connected to the places that they love, perhaps more places in the world would be cared for. I one day hope to return to the Rockies and continue to engage in its complex history and learn more about its ecological processes and challenge the dominant narratives about this place. I hope today my journey in coming to understand how important places are to our involvement in our communities has inspired you to reflect on your relationship to the places you love. Thank you. <laughs>